Well, good morning and welcome to episode two of our new podcast, Next Steps. Uh, with me again is Pastor Pedro Morales. How are you feeling today, Pastor? I'm doing a lot better. Uh, I feel like I'm almost completely better. Uh, I can sense it. I mean, I'm, I'm feeling it. I, I, there's certain things I look for to uh, to know that I'm healing up, and today I felt that. So I'm, I'm really excited. That's awesome. That's great. Well, hey, well, obviously yesterday we started with salvation, which we, we really say it's not a step, right, because we have to stand before we get to take a walk. And uh, so now that we're now that we've sta- stood together, uh, we're going to look at our first step of obedience, as we as we often call it, and that is following the Lord in biblical believers' baptism. Now, again, there's nothing has probably separated Christianity more. Uh, more of our our forefathers have been martyred for baptism, uh, probably than any other thing. And so there, we we could spend months talking about all the different false versions of baptism that are out there. Um, but as my great mentor, who of course I'm talking to here, uh, used to always say, and I've asked him to again to share this illustration, which you guys have probably heard me say because I say it so often because it's so fitting. Um, he's going to share an illustration to help us to focus and understand that that we're going to focus on the scripture and what does the Bible say about uh, believers' baptism, and not so much the counterfeits. And when you hear the truth from the Word of God, not from from Pastor Sufley or Pastor Morales, um, you do some soul searching yourself to see if you've been truly. Uh, scripturally baptized. And so go ahead, Pastor, and uh, share with us that illustration. Yeah, so, you know, I, I've read and heard that the Federal Reserve agents, in order to detect uh, a counterfeit bills, counterfeit currency, uh, they don't study uh, the hundreds or thousands of uh, varieties of counterfeits. They, they basically are taught to study the original, the real deal, uh, the non-counterfeit bills. And so they know those notes so well they know those uh, pieces of paper those bills so well that they quickly and easily spot a counterfeit when they see it not because they they uh, know the the qualities of the counterfeit but because they know the qualities of the real thing the authentic and that's what we should do spiritually scripturally biblically Mm -hmm. Uh, we should know the bible so well or try to know the bible well enough that we can spot a counterfeit when we see it or hear it Right, yeah. And there, there's many out there uh, with many different doctrines, but especially with baptism. And so the first thing we're going to talk about is who should be baptized. Now, we talked about yesterday that, that the, the Lord is not willing that any should perish. And as we're going to go through this, you're going to hear us mention the, the general will of God and the specific will of God. Uh, the general will of God is for every person that's born. He wants everybody to get saved, and then all those who get saved to then turn around and be baptized. Um, and, and so on and so forth. But then there's the specific will, which we'll get into a little bit later um, through these podcasts. And so the first thing we want to do is, of course, go to the scripture to see who should be baptized. Because again, many people do it at different ages, different methods and things like that. And so in the, in the book of Acts, um, in chapter 8, uh, this is a very, very uh, accurate account, very, um, very, very well-known account of Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. And of course, we know that the Holy Spirit led Philip to a divine appointment to meet the eunuch uh, in the desert. And, and that was when he was reading the Bible, he was reading the scriptures, and, and Philip asked him if he understood what he was reading. And he said, how can I unless some man show me? And of course, Philip got in the chariot with him and, and saw where he was reading, and he, and he used that scripture to preach Christ unto him. And so we're going to pick up reading in verse 35. It says, then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came to a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? What would stop me from being a proper candidate to be baptized? And this is very important. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. If you're born again, you may. And he answered and said, and this is very important too, because a lot of modern versions of the Bible take this part out, which is really the most important thing, because it's not, it's not just believing, but what are you believing in and who are you That's believing right. in? And it said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And that's so, very important, Pastor Suglio, because we talked about this yesterday, uh, believing and what is true biblical belief. Mm-hmm. And true biblical belief for salvation is belief in Christ as our substitute, Christ as our uh, uh, the lamb that takes away our sins, that's the belief that he's uh, basically, the Philip is uh, addressing with the Ethiopian eunuch. 
Do you believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is the Savior? He's your Savior. He died for your sins. Do you believe that? That's very important. That's right. And, and so, and so, 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 the Ethiopian eunuch would have been what we call a holistic Jew. He would have been of Jewish descent, but not uh, living in Jerusalem. And so, he was tra obviously traveling in for a feast. That's where he got the scripture and was heading back. And so, you know, the Bible is very clear that both Jew and Gentile, both Jewish folks as well as uh, Greeks, Gentile, any, 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 anyone else, basically, essentially in the world other than Jews, can be saved. And we see a, a, an account of that in Acts chapter ten, as as Peter goes to the first. Um, non-Jewish person that trusts Christ in the New Testament, uh, Cornelius, uh, the Roman centurion. And so it's important for us to realize, again, after, Phil, after Peter preached to him and he trusted Christ, verse 47 says, Can any man forbid water that these should be baptized? Because his family was there as well, and they all heard the gospel, and they all trusted Christ, uh, which have received the Holy Ghost, a sign of being born again, uh, as well as we. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord, then, then prayed they him to carry to tarry certain days, and so we see two accounts of, of somebody um, where where the only requirement that we have for for baptism is uh, believers' uh, salvation, true scriptural salvation. That's right. Acts chapter two, <clears throat> excuse me. Acts chapter two and verse forty one also teaches us this, uh, and they that gladly received his word were baptized, mm -hmm. and so you must gladly receive. The word of God by believing in Jesus Christ, John chapter one and verse twelve. You know we become believers by receiving, mm -hmm. uh, and so once we receive the word, once we believe on Christ, then we are to be baptized. That's Not right. before, after. Right. That's right. And, and, and that is that is the right. biblical requirement. A lot of people they try to add unto that. A lot of people believe that you must be baptized in order to get saved, uh, you know, making it part of the salvation process. You're not officially saved until then, or if you, you know, you can come to Jesus just as you are for salvation, but you can't be baptized until you, you know, start, again, adding works unto your walk, which is just not the way. And that's not it's not biblical. It's not in the Bible. You don't find that anywhere in Scripture. Right. And so, and so we see who could be baptized. So, so God's will is for everybody to get saved, and then his will, his, his general will for everybody who gets saved is to be baptized. And so if you haven't been scripturally baptized yet, if you haven't been baptized at all, or if you haven't been scripturally baptized again as after we go through this today, then that is your next step. That is, that is the first step in, of obedience. And so, so and I'm not... Let me, add, let me add this here, Pastor Suglio. I had a uh, lady in our church in New York where I pastored who was 66 years old and had been in church basically since before she was born. She was, before, you know, her mother, when she was pregnant with her, of course, went to church, and she had been in church her entire life. Now, it may not have been a Baptist church, but nonetheless, she was in church. She had a sincere, genuine desire to, to follow God, to find the Lord. And at some point in her life, she trusted Christ as her Savior. Genuine, sincere, biblical salvation, like we talked about yesterday. But for some reason, uh, it was never... Uh, it was never taught. She was never led. Uh, she was never encouraged. Uh, it was something that wasn't prioritized. Baptism wasn't prioritized. The Lord Jesus Christ made it very, very much a priority when he said in Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them. He, he commands us to go and reach people with the gospel and baptize them. And so uh, she was 66 years old when she came to our church. And of course, I, I questioned her. I asked her about her baptism, and she said she had never been baptized. Mm. Uh, they wanted to join the church, uh, and so I encouraged her. So we, you know, you should follow the Lord and believers baptism. And it was, there was some some fear there for her being under the water and so forth and so on. Uh, we walked her through that as kindly and as gently as we could. And at sixty six years old, she for the first time followed the Lord and believers baptism. It's very yeah. important. Yeah. We need to we need to be baptized if we're going to be obedient. To the Lord, and really to be one hundred percent in the in the Lord's will, and to really yeah. find the specific will that He has for us. If we're not doing the general will, will never be revealed to us the specific will. And that's so right. That, that 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 that's great. And, and I'm glad you brought that up because our, really our, our next point that we're going to talk about is is what or how should the proper yeah. candidate of a born again believer be baptized, or as we like to say, the proper method. Again, yes. people do many different things. Uh, but you mentioned that she had a little bit of a fear of going under the water. And so we know the word baptism is translated from the Greek word baptizo, 
which actually means immersion, to totally go underneath and come back up. But again, we don't want to just stop with that because it's, the definition is good, but we want the, the, the biblical, scriptural uh, reasoning why. And so um, I've got a few scriptures here that I'll read, and then uh, Pastor Morales, if you'll comment on them. The first one is uh, the Lord Jesus Christ himself in Matthew chapter 3, verse 16, says, And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And so, again, we know in order to come up out of the water, you must first go down under the water. And exactly. so, again, if it was good enough for Jesus, and this is really what would help lead me to follow in believer's baptism, even though I had a, a sprinkling done as a baby. So if it was good enough for Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, it's good enough for me. And Amen. so he went down into the water and then came up out. Again, uh, in Acts chapter 8, you know, we read verse 38 where he said, uh, Philip commanded the, the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized them. And verse 39 says, and when they were come up out of the water. So again, going down under, immersion, coming back out. And then in Romans chapter 6, verse 1 and 3, and Romans chapter 6 is a wonderful chapter that teaches us, after Romans chapter 5 teaches us that we're free from the penalty of sin, Romans chapter 6 teaches us that we're free from the power of sin, that we no longer are a slave to sin. And it really triggers it with discussing and talking about that baptism. And so even though baptism has nothing to do with salvation, and it's not essential at all for salvation, I would say it's 100% uh, essential, right, and, and necessary to living that victorious Christian life. Amen. Amen. And the, the only character in Scripture, in the New Testament, I should say, that uh, I, we are given an example of who was saved and did not get baptized was the thief on the cross. That's right. When he turned to the Lord and said, you know, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And the Lord Jesus said, today shalt thou be with me in paradise. So that man accepted Christ as his Savior while on the cross. He died. He never had an opportunity to to be baptized so he didn't get baptized but nonetheless had he remained alive had he not died on the cross and he lived uh, a life you know after being saved then he should have been baptized and he would have been in the perfect will of god uh, to do that and if he would not have been baptized he would have been being disobedient yeah that, and that's a great point to show that it's not essential for salvation but that, it right. is essential that's for right. the victorious christian life and so Romans chapter 6, verse 1 through, 1 through 3, and we'll read 4 through 6 later, says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? And so really, the baptism itself is a picture of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I, yeah. I love when a lot of folks will say, well, when we bury people, we don't just sprinkle some dirt on them, right? We right, put right. Them in the I, I was going to say that. I said, when, when, when someone dies, you know, we literally immerse them in the ground. Yeah. We place their bodies under the dirt. Uh, and when the Lord Jesus Christ was buried, he was, he was in a tomb. You know, he was put in the tomb, and yeah. then eventually he rose from the tomb. Uh, and so that's the picture, the picture of... Of the death, we die to ourselves, we die to our own self-efforts, we die to our own uh, ability to save ourselves, because we can't, and then we're buried with him by baptism uh, into his death, and then we are resurrected as we come up out of the water. Uh, that's a tremendous picture. I know it, it helped me, it helped crystallize baptism for me as a very young Christian when I when I understood that, that it, it uh, typifies, it's a picture of the death, the burial, and the resurrection which is the gospel. Yeah. This is what we believe in yeah. for salvation, and we're showing that picture. Yeah, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4 that we read yesterday. And again, you'll, you'll yes. see the, the flowing of the scriptures and the connecting of, of these dots, which is why we are so big on the scripture, the scripture, the Amen. scripture. Amen. And so we see, uh, I, think, I think it's very clear from scripture who should be baptized and how they should be baptized. And what about this? Because I know some people might be listening and, and maybe maybe they haven't yet been uh, baptized, or maybe um, you know they, they just recently got saved. And so, when should the proper candidate be baptized? So, so if yeah. the proper candidate is baptized by the proper method, when should they be saved? And, and you mentioned it earlier. Acts chapter two, verse forty-one says, "Then they that gladly received his word, those that received the gospel, were baptized." So it happened immediately after. Yeah, right? and and the rest of that verse says, "And the same day." Yeah. that were added unto them about 3,000 souls. So it, it, it makes the correlation of they received the word of God, they gladly received the word, they got saved, and that same day they were baptized. Yeah. Now I know that's not always possible, sure. uh, but that should be the goal. 
to as yeah. quickly as possible, you know, as quickly uh, or as soon after salvation as possible yeah. to be back. And, and, and if you have not yet done it, I mean, it, it's you can't go backwards, but, but from this day going forward, let, let's get Amen. you baptized and then take the next steps moving forward. You're never going to get to the next next step unless you follow this one. And so, Correct. you know, but, but don't, don't dwell on the past, you know, just now that you realize it, once you have understanding of it, make a point to submit to that, regardless of whatever reason, because we can all come up with a lot of reasons why we shouldn't do something. I, I got saved in November of 1993. I didn't get baptized until I think it was like April of 1994. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't because of myself. I wanted to be baptized, but the church I attended at the time, they didn't, they didn't emphasize baptism. It wasn't a Baptist church. Uh, they didn't have a baptistry. Uh, and then I did join a Baptist church, or uh, I got affiliated with a Baptist church. And it's a small place. They didn't have a baptistry either. Uh, so I had to wait. We borrowed a baptistry from a Brethren in Christ church down the road. Uh, and we were baptized then. But, uh, you know, there's reasons why it may not happen right away, but it shouldn't be because we don't want it to happen right away. Yeah, that's right. And, and, and after I got saved, it was a few weeks before I got baptized, and I just didn't know. You know, the Holy Spirit convicted me. I went and talked to one of the pastors of the church. They showed me scripturally exactly what we're going over, and then I submitted to it. But I'm telling you, once I came up out of that water, I mean, even though nothing, it's not it's not special water or anything, it's like it, it's like I showed God that I meant business, and, and, he, and, he, and he, he used that. And, and then started trusting me with so much more, and I grew so much more. You know, many Amen. times I always thought that my life changed so drastically because I got saved, which is true. Uh, but faithful church attendance, faith, faithful, uh, you know, devotional time, and submitting to, to the, you know, the will of God of getting baptized is really how the Lord was able to use me from, from salvation, you know, to, from point A to point B of, of, of all the change around that happened. And so, Amen. so a lot of people, I think, are in that in limbo stage. And so a few more quick examples. Acts chapter 9, the Apostle Paul himself, uh, once Ananias went to him after he got saved on the road to Damascus in verse 17 and 18, it talks about, uh, in verse 18 it says, And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. So, so verse 17 talks about him, him, him hearing the gospel, you know, being filled with the Holy Ghost, getting saved, being born again and then being baptized, the very next verse. Acts chapter 16, of course, Paul and Silas uh, in the Philippian uh, jail with the jailer who asked him, how, we, how, how, can we be, how can I be saved? What must I do to be saved? Of course, they preached the gospel to him. Uh, him and his household heard the gospel. They get saved. Verse 33 says, And he took them that same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized, he and all his straightway. And so we're seeing, I like that. I like the phrase the same hour of the night. Yeah. Like they wait at no time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and so it's like yeah. I think again, it's we can't look, we can't dwell on the past, we can't go backwards. But um, if if, this, if you haven't yet been scripturally baptized, you know, I wasn't scripturally baptized, even though I thought that I was baptized. And if you're in that same boat, and I'll give you uh, you know the leeway to listen to this and choose, uh, you know, we'll let the Holy Spirit uh, guide and lead you to if you have a scriptural baptism or not. And okay. so as we move forward. Um, we see, we see not only not only when they should be baptized, but also where should the baptism take place. And so I think some people kind of get this a little bit twisted, right? Because I mean, essentially, the, it's not the location itself. It's not even really the person that's doing the baptism. It's the it's the it's the church, right? Because the the local church, uh, the true New Testament church, which you'll hear us say a lot, because uh, they've been known by many names over the years. That hasn't always been Baptist. It was typically a name given to them. Uh, but true New Testament churches have have always uh, been given the authority to baptize and, and to and to have the Lord's Supper. And so, if if a pastor uh, is doing the baptism, it's by the authority given to him from the local church. And yes. so, but but like you mentioned, many churches don't have a bapti baptistry, right? And so, your baptism is not uh, any less real than mine because maybe you had to go to a different location. Uh, or, or, or a river, you know, when you were in New York, you, you okay. actually, uh, they, they used to, prior to you getting there and getting a baptistry, they used to baptize in the river. And so yep. it's not so much the location uh, that, that we want people to focus on, but it's the authority. Amen. And so Matthew chapter 3, verse 13, it says, Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. And so Jesus I understood that that he wanted the proper authority to baptize him, and obviously he who who was 
perfect in all ways, was willing to walk all the way from Galilee to Jordan, which I'm not sure exactly where. I know Pastor Mix often mentions it, but it was, it was quite the walk, you know, pretty, pretty, quite a far walk from to do it to, to be baptized under the proper authority. And then, of course, as Pastor Morales said, in, in Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 and 19, we'll, we'll get to verse 20 later uh, in a different uh, day, uh, but it says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, as he's getting ready to deliver the Great Commission to them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. So Jesus has been given the power, and he's then transferring that power to a true New Testament local church uh, to, to have that authority. And he says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. As we spend time as pastors of the First Baptist Church of Kingstown, that's the authority that gave us the ability to do a podcast and talk about salvation and to teach the gospel yesterday to be able to go through on, on the airwaves really to all nations and then the, like you mentioned earlier the very next step is baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost and i often say this you know we at first you look at the great commission and it's and it's directed towards you i need to be saved i need to be taught and preach the gospel and trust christ i need to be baptized I need to be discipled, right? And then it turns around the other way, and then we, as being members of a local church, because we can't, we don't have the authority on our own to go off and just start baptizing people, right? Uh, but but through the authority of the local church, then we need to go and preach the gospel and get people saved. We need to baptize people in, you know, into the to the church body, uh, and, and we need to disciple people, right? And so it kind of it kind of starts off towards you, and then it turns around and it, it it should flow from you. Amen. And and this is important because I've seen this, and Pastor Suglio, I'm sure you have at some point, uh, seen where people have come to a church that we were on staff or we were part of, and they want to join, and uh, they uh, we ask them, you know, are you saved? Are you biblically saved? And have you been scripturally baptized? And I've had this where people say, well, you know, I was baptized in the woods in some river by, you know, some uh, some group you know, that wasn't affiliated with a particular church. And I said, well, yeah. you know, that, that's not a scriptural baptism because it's not under the proper authority. Now, again, uh, if a person is representing a church, they're representing a church, uh, and they're doing it at a river or in the woods somewhere, but they're, they're doing it under the, the authority of that church, then that would apply. That like Philip. Like Philip, like Phil right? Yes, exactly. Uh, but if, if it's not representing a church, if it's just representing some uh, parachurch organization, mm -hmm. then that's not a biblical. That's not a biblical baptism. Yeah, yeah. God has chosen to use the <laughs> local true New Testament church to fulfill the Great Commission, and so again, Amen. we don't have the authority in and of ourselves. It's the church that gives us that, right. that authority, and Amen. so yeah, that that's very important. And so it's not so much where, but the, where where the authority lies. That that is the situation that uh, is important. And so again, you have to look at you look at your baptism if you if you have one that you're that you're claiming. And say, okay, well, not not necessarily location, but was the authority correct? Was it a true New Testament church? And when we say Amen. that, we're talking about following the the correct biblical doctrines, the, the what we would say is the Baptist distinctives. You know, again, you, you could take that word Baptist out of it, it's the distinctive, it's the doctrines of the scripture that have been followed all the way through, um, all, again, by different names. And the reason we say that, the reason you'll hear us say that a, a lot is because there are churches that use the name Baptist that we would not say are, is a biblical, true New Testament church because anybody yeah. can use the name. That's right. And Amen. So, and so now as, as we close this one, and, and, and this is really the, the most important part of anything, right? Uh, you know, we've been taught uh, as preachers and homiletics, right? It's all about the application, right? And so and so you've, 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 we've taught uh, now who should be baptized, you know, what method of baptism, what authority, you know, when. But the most important reason is that we need to, to, to talk about is why should we be scripturally baptized? Why is it important for the for the believer to be scripturally baptized? And, and, and Pastor Miles, you mentioned a little bit earlier, uh, but I've asked you here to share uh, the wedding ring illustration. And I think this is a good illustration uh, to kind of understand uh, really the importance of it. You know, we often read verses uh, 9 and 10 in Romans chapter 10. But verse 11 talks about, or 11 or 12 talks about us not being ashamed. And a lot of people, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an outward expression, right, of an inward feeling. That's right. It shows us that and, we're not ashamed. And the illustration that I share with folks that I have had the privilege of leading to Christ uh, with regards to baptism is I tell them, I say, look, uh, I often grab my wedding band on my, my finger and I say, what does this represent? And they'll say, well, it represents that you're married, you know, that you know, you're in a committed relationship for the rest of your life. 
or something to that effect. And I said, exactly. And I said, if I take this ring off of my finger, which, you know, I, I physically remove the ring from my finger and place it, you know, somewhere. And I say, am I still married? And, you know, sometimes they'll think, and other things, you know, I say, it's not a trick question. I said, am I still married? And of course, I still am married to Trina. Uh, we're still married regardless of whether or not I wear this wedding band or not. Right. But this wedding band is a symbol of our relationship and our commitment to each other. So when I wear it, I'm telling the world that I am committed to her. Pedro Morales is committed to Trina Morales for life. That's the symbol. That, that's my my devotion. I'm, I'm wearing it on my hand so people see that. Uh, it's not for me and for her. It's for other people to know that we are in a committed relationship. We're, we're in, a, uh, in a marriage together. And so if I don't wear it, then it's as if I'm embarrassed or I'm ashamed of my marriage. And unfortunately, we've seen people in this world that are doing nefarious things that are married uh, and who don't want to don't want others to know that that's the first thing they do is they take off their wedding band. Mm -hmm. So other people don't know. Uh, so if we don't get baptized, if we don't follow the Lord and believers baptism, it's as if we're trying to deny uh, the Lord that saved us, the Lord that sacrificed for us. Um, and I don't know if we'll have time, uh, but there's another illustration. I talk about the fire, you know, uh, whether or not you remember the illustration I told you about where if, if, <clears throat> if we're walking down the street and I happen to see your house on fire and, you know, I call 911, but I realize you're not going to get there in time and I break into your house and I save you and your family. And in the process, I sustain third, fourth degree burns. I end up spending time in the hospital. Uh, you, you get an insurance payment. Uh, your house is repaired. I get out of the hospital several months later. I stop by to say hello. You're having a party, a birthday party for one of your relatives at your house. And I'm disfigured. I'm, I'm injured. You know, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm healed, but, you know, I'm not myself. I don't look the same. Uh, I knock on your door, ring your doorbell. You come and you answer the door. Would you let me in? I asked, you know, the prospect. And they would say, of course. And I said, would you introduce me to your family? They say, absolutely. You know, you saved my life. You saved our, you know, our, our immediate family's life. And I said, the Lord Jesus has done much greater. You know, even in that imaginary story, I would have mm -hmm. saved you from any, a, a physical fire. The Lord Jesus Christ saved you from a spiritual, eternal fire. Mm -hmm. And so we should be more than willing to uh, not be ashamed to introduce him to other people. And one of the best ways that we do that is by being baptized. Yeah. We tell other people it's our testimony, it's our witness on behalf of the Lord that he saved us. And so it's it's very important that we be baptized. Yeah, and and it, and it does. I mean, as as a, as a minister, or even when I was just a man in the pews, the more people I would see baptized, the more it would charge me up to want to go share the gospel with people. Amen. And so we've Amen. given reasons why, in God's eyes, we should. Why, in other believers' eyes, we should. But let's now focus more importantly on why, as as the individual, the believer, we should. And because it's, 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 it's God, it's towards God, it's towards other believers and even unsaved folks in the, in the pews, but also it has a benefit for us. You know, back in Matthew chapter 3, we were reading some verses earlier, uh, verse 14 says, But John, shall my John the Baptist, forbade him, talking about Jesus' baptism, who's saying to baptize him, uh, he said, I have need of baptize, to be baptized of thee, and thou comest to me. Like, wait a minute, who, who, I, I need you to baptize me, you know, <laughs> who, who am I to baptize you? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Suffer it, or allow it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. And so Jesus was saying, hey, let it, let it happen, because we must fulfill all righteousness. And so I would say to, to, to a believer out there that has not been scripturally baptized, you should be scripturally baptized. You need to be scripturally baptized so you could fulfill all righteousness. And then we see, again, in verse 16, we read how he was baptized. And then in verse 17, it says, And lo, a voice came from heaven, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I, may, I am well pleased. I don't know about you, but as, as a brand new believer, as a brand new son of God, I want my Heavenly Father, my Creator, my Savior, to be well pleased with Amen. me. And so I, us submitting to that first step of believer baptism is a way that we do that. And then back well, in... When the Lord Jesus said, you know, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness, he's saying, hey, this is the right thing to do. Yeah, that's good. This is the righteous thing. This is the right thing to do. And we see the confirmation from God the Father who's saying, it is the right thing to do because it pleased me. That's good. That's good. Amen. That's good. And then, and then back in, in, in the book of Romans, chapter 6, you know, we read earlier talking about the, the picture of the death and the burial and the resurrection. 
verse 4 will pick up in it. It says, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in a newness of life. So you want to know how to live the victorious Christian life, why you keep on maybe struggling and falling into sin. Well, faithfulness and, 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 and the first of the faithfulness is, is baptism is a big part of us having that ability to, to be able to overcome that. Uh, verse 5 says, For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Verse 6 is key. It says, Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. The Greek word there, I think, is klokageo, which means uh, uh, not annihilated, destroyed, but paralyzed, destroyed. Because we know the devil can no longer force us to sin, but he sure could try to tempt us into sinning. Like a man that's paralyzed can no longer be a bully and beat us up, but he can still talk the talk, even if he can't walk the walk. And it says that henceforth we should not serve sin. And so our baptism is key uh, in, in, in having that ability uh, to not serve sin and to start walking in and living that victorious Christian life. Uh, 1 Peter 3.21, this is our last verse, says, The like figure whereunto even baptism doth now save us. Not talking about salvation. It goes on to say, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. That's, that's salvation. But what it does save us from is the answer of a good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so it's, it's about cleaning our conscience, about moving on. Uh, putting the, the old man is, is, is passed away. Behold, all things are become new. We are a new creature in Christ. And, 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 and it's happened at salvation, yes. But it's like once we, once we step forward for that baptism, it's like we've showed the Lord that we mean business. And he starts to, to, to trust us with more and more. Amen. It's, it's again like the wedding band illustration. I place this wedding band on my finger to identify with Trina Ginto at the time when we got mm -hmm. married, Trina Morales now, but I identify with her. She identifies with me. That's the symbol. And when we are baptized, we are identifying with the Lord Jesus Christ, his death, his burial, his resurrection. We're saying, hey, we side with him. Uh, we're glad that he sided with us, and now we accept to side with him. And so now for the rest of my life, my life is committed to him. And so that's that's the example there. And so there's that commitment. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and then and he blesses that. Because, again, salvation is he did it all. We just receive it, right? But the victorious Christian life, that, that is a life where the more we do, as Jesus said, you know, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a little. I will give you much. The, you know, the more we do, the more he knows he could trust us, the more he'll give us. And, right. and really, it all starts with baptism. And so I hope that That's was an right. encouragement to everybody today. Um, again, this is this is the, the the first step, right? We're going to go through next steps. And, and, and so if you have not yet been scripturally baptized, if you have questions about do I truly have a scriptural, biblical baptism, a believer's baptism, then please, again, you know, go on our website. We're First Baptist Church of Kingstown in Alexandria, Virginia. Uh, go on the website or however you're getting this feed, ask the person, and I'm sure they, they have our contact information. Call us, text us, email us. We'd love to sit down with you. We'd love to help uh, talk about salvation, talk about baptism, whatever the case may be. We just want to fulfill the Great Commission and be a blessing to others. Uh, as, as, as somebody was to Paul, as, as somebody was to Pastor Morales, as, as he was to me, and we want to do that for so many other people. And so this is really the first step. And so thank you again for joining us. Uh, we do uh, understand that this is a, a new thing, and so we ask you to please bear with us. Uh, we get to do all the fun stuff. My wife's doing all the behind the scenes editing and things like that. And so we, we have a, the, the burden to do this until vision night. If it's something that, that you know you guys want us to continue or, or we decide the Lord wants us to continue, let us know, obviously, and then we would kind of upgrade the equipment a little bit better. So please, and up from between now and the 20th, just bear with us a little bit. And uh, trust me, we will get better uh, as we go. Again, this is something new for us. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Suglio. Uh, I'm glad that we were able to get together once again. We hope it's a blessing to all of you listeners out there. And uh, we're here for you. If you need anything that we can help you with, as uh, he mentioned, just don't hesitate to contact us. Amen. Have a blessed day.